Okay, a new unit. Well, actually, this unit is going to be added on to your last unit. So this is going to be added on to Chapter 4. So this is Chapter 5 in your textbook. And we're going to have a test on Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 combined next week. So we need to be ready for that. So moving on to systems of linear equations. Now linear equations we have a little bit of an idea about. Those are things like y equals mx plus b, where we have a slope and we have a y-intercept. And we've learned about those a little bit. We've learned how to graph them, we've learned about parallel lines, we've learned different things. Systems in mathematics mean more than one. So now what we're going to have is we're going to have more than one linear equation and we're going to talk about how they interact with each other. So up until now we've only had one line ever been graphed. Now we're going to have more than one line being graphed at a time. Remember throughout this unit whenever they ask you to use technology to graph or to use a graphing calculator you're going to use Desmos. Desmos can be found on your LMS on the right hand side or you can download the free app. I suggest that you put it on your phone, it's on my phone, and you will be able to use it during certain times on the test and what have you, so make sure that you do know how to use it. Okay, let's move on. Lesson 5.1, solving linear systems by graphing. Now what an interesting question, solving. So what is it gonna mean to solve for a system of linear equations? Well, it's going to mean to find the point of intersection. So wherever our lines cross is going to be what we call a point of intersection. And that point of intersection, since we're all mathematicians and mathematicians are lazy, is going to be P O I or point of intersection. That'll be our short form for point of intersection. And they're telling us how to do it in this lesson. So for lesson 5.1, we're going to do it by graphing. Which begs the question, are there other ways to do it? And the answer is a definite yes. And we're going to have to learn those as well. So a linear system is a set of two or more linear equations that are considered at the same time. So two or more. The solution to a linear system is called a point of intersection. A linear system can be solved by graphing. And once we graph it, we read the point of intersection from the graph. To check a solution to a linear system, what we do is we substitute the coordinates of the intersection into the original equations. And what we look for, we look for left-hand side to be equal to the right-hand side. And when it is, that means that we have inputted the correct coordinates. We have the right point of intersection. And we're going to talk about that. And you've done left and right-hand limit or left and right-hand check charts in grade 8 and in grade 9, and we're going to do them again in grade 10, and we'll go over how to do those. So here's our first example. Now here's the, here's the deal, kids. You have to read. I know you don't read the math. I know you don't read the, the words that are there. You have to solve a linear system by graphing. There's three main ideas in that sentence. First of all, solve. What does it mean? It means find a point of intersection. That's what it means to solve a linear system. What does linear system mean? That means two or more lines. And what does graphing mean? Well, that means to do it on a graph. So we're going to actually draw them. So that means draw. So POI means to solve. Linear system means two or more lines, and graphing means to draw it. And that's pretty, that's, there's a lot of information in that little sentence that you don't read. 
So when you get a test or an assignment with me and you're going to say, I don't know what to do here, I'm going to say, read the question. Make sure you know what it says. So example one, the first thing they want us to do is to rearrange. They want us to rearrange the equation into the slope y-intercept form. So they want us to put it in this form. And the reason why they want us to put it into that form is because it makes it easy to graph. In the last lesson that I taught you, we know how to graph something in y equals mx plus b form really easily. So that's what we want to do. We want to take this and put it into a form that we can graph easily. So this is the form you want, y equals mx plus b. This is not in the right form. We got a problem here, Houston. Our problem here is that y is not isolated. It's not by itself. We want to isolate, look at that great word, isolate y. That means get y by itself. So in other words, we want to get rid of this 2x. What's the 2x doing to the y? It's adding. How do we get rid of a 2x on the left-hand side? We subtract a 2x. Does that make sense? If I was to subtract a 2x from the left-hand side, I would be left with simply y on the left-hand side. But I need to remember that I need to subtract a 2x on this side. Now, I could write it like this. That would, that would be mathematically correct. But is it really in this form? Does it look like y equals mx plus b? Not really. We would rather have it as negative 2x plus 2, which means the exact same thing. So that's really how we would like to have that. Now this one over here is already in y equals mx plus b form. So we can just leave it as it is. So I have two lines here. I have line number one, and that's how I name things in mathematics. I put a number beside it and a circle around it, and I just called it one. I just called that two. Now, when my, when my daughter was born, my wife and I wanted to pick names for her, and I, sh I, I suggested one, and I thought that would be a perfectly good name, but I didn't win. I didn't win. They wouldn't let me name my daughter one. Okay, so what we do now is we're going to graph both lines on the same grid. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. And so I want to graph this one, and I called it equation. Now, look, see, they called it equation I when I typed it. I'm going to call it equation 1, and then call it equation 2. So here's equation 1. So I want to graph it. y equals negative 2x plus 2. So what is the slope? The slope is negative 2 over 1. Now, what is the b value? The b value is plus 2. So if I'm going to graph this, remembering from the last lesson I did, I go to the point 0, 2, and I use my rise and run. So I go over 1 and down 2. And I'm going to do it again, over 1 and down 2, so I get three points. I'm going to take my ruler. Now, you need to be accurate here. Okay, I got people really squinting, so I'm going to open up this so that you can see it better in class. So I've got these. I think I need to come back a little bit. Can't really see because this is in the way. Let me get rid of that. All right. So I've got this point here, 0, 2. I got this point here, 1, 0. I got this point here, 2, negative 2. And this line, lining it up as best I can, goes right through there. Looking to my studio audience to see if they're squinting anymore. No, they seem to be okay now. Maybe move it up on the screen a little bit. So this is my equation 1. This is y equals negative 2x plus 2. Now what I want to do is I want to sketch my other one. What's the other one? What's equation 2? Well, equation 2 is y equals negative 5 over 4 minus, oops, I need the x, minus 1. So what is my slope? My slope is negative 5 over 4. What is my b value? My b value is negative 1. That means I have a rise and I have a run. 
So I'm going to put this point on. So it crosses that 0, comma, negative 1 right there. And I'm going to use a run of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a rise of negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so, as long as I'm really, really careful, I can line this up. Now, that's tough. That's really, really tough. I'd like another point, but I can't go this way because there's no more room. I'm not going to be able to find it on my axes. I would like to go this way. So if you think about this, now this is a really interesting question. So one of the ways of getting the rate triangle was to go rise negative and run positive. And that gave me my rate triangle. Notice I could have done this. I could have gone a positive rise and a negative run, okay? Because the negative on the top, is negative divided by a positive is a negative, and a positive divided by a negative is, a po is also a negative. So if I wanted to, instead of going to the right, I could go to the left, one, two, three, four, because that's a negative run, one, two, three, four, and I would go up five. So then I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that would give me another point on the line. So now I have three of them, which makes it a whole bunch easier to line up properly. Let's make sure I got this right. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I didn't. It needs to be down one. And so it's going to be. And be careful with that. That's an easy mistake to make. So there we go. There's my second line. So this is y equals negative 5 over 4 x minus 1. So now I've graphed both of them. And by the way, graphing's a pain in the butt because you really have to be accurate. And lots of room for error here, okay? But we do our best and we look at the graph and we find the point of intersection. And that point of intersection is right there. And we call that the point of intersection. And that point is given by 4 in the x and negative 6 in the y. And that's your solution. Your solution for this equation, for this system of equation, is when x equals 4, y equals negative 6. That is the solution. I'm going to stop the video here and we'll be back in just a minute.